208-4682. Online at drfieldbrush.com. I went to the Secret Service website and I found the number for their public affairs and I talked to their public information officer. And I said, is this actually what happened? Did the Secret Service comment on this? Did the Secret Service warn her? Was she a threat to Donald Trump? And what the public information officer for the Secret Service told me was, look, we don't even comment on our own cases, on our own investigations involving our own people. Why on earth would our agents be commenting on a criminal investigation out of Florida? He, he was incredulous at my question, uh, you know, kind of uh, just incredulous that anyone would even suggest that Secret Service are out there three weeks later uh, throwing anonymous quotes out about what happened in a, a random criminal investigation. Now, that is Sean Davis. He's co-founder of The Federalist. He was on yesterday's program. And Sean called the Secret Service for a response based on a story that my next guest, David Martosco of the Daily Mail, reported on earlier this week that he was told by a Secret Service agent that reporter Michelle Fields was twice warned to keep her hands off of Donald Trump at that event that we saw on video. Here to help us clear this up is David Martosco, Daily Mail's U.S. political editor. David, good to see you. So what do you make, Because I and I've seen you and Sean kind of go back and forth a little bit on you and, and a couple of other people go back and forth on, on social media a little bit about this topic. So what is it that, that, that they're not getting? What do you think that they're not understanding about this story? Well, several things. Um, for starters, there's a huge difference between an agency spokesperson and the officials in the agency. I mean, how many times have you read a story in the Washington Post where someone says, uh, you know, an Obama administration official told me X, Y, or Z, and then, you know, the, the official White House line is, we don't have a comment. This is incredibly common. It's, it's not a hard thing to understand if you're out there every day as a journalist. It's also not a hard thing to understand if you're out there every day covering a candidate, but that you get to know the people who are around the candidate. You get to know the press staffers, you get to know the campaign staffers, you, you, and yes, you do get to know the Secret Service agents. You know, we're on first name basis with a lot of these people. Uh, and this particular agent I have a personal relationship with. So it's, um, you know, I stand by my reporting. I, I think Sean is uh, a very smart, clever guy, but he's running after a red herring and, and I think demonstrating that he's not a journalist. Um, if, if we limited ourselves to simply calling official press spokespeople, for comment from government agencies, we would never get any news at all of any real meaningful value. The way you make these stories is you go and talk to the people who were there. Right. You don't call a, uh, an agency spokesperson in Washington who has no idea what happened. Well, I will say, uh, you know, uh, just from when we were at CPAC um, most recently, I was curious at the, at the Secret Service presence, which I'm sure, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know if you were at CPAC this past year, uh, we broadcasted from there, and there was, I mean, it took about two hours, almost two hours to get in that main ballroom, and of course, you know, David, that can be kind of mind-numbingly annoying when you're standing there for two hours, and you have, you're going to speak, or you have a session coming up, but you got to go through security, and I was told by Secret Service, a Secret Service agent, that it was actually, it was Ben Carson, it was because of his Secret Service detail, because Cruz and the others, they had declined Secret Service. Uh, I think, I think even Trump had his own, just his own personal security detail at that point and um, so and then of course that was the same day that Carson said he was dropping out so everybody went through that for nothing and when I was confirming you know and I know what you mean it was it was one of the Secret Service agents he was standing there by one of the doors that led led back into the bowels of the hotel and he was like yeah you know we just you know kind of found out along with everybody else uh, so I, I do understand that but at the same time I, I also understand too the even bigger issue to me here isn't because I look on the video and to me it doesn't look like they anybody said anything to her but Corey Lewandowski I mean I trust the Secret Service agents more than I trust Lewandowski and I would think if they had assessed her as being a threat they wouldn't have allowed him to walk right by her well I can't speak for the agents the protocol but I will tell you that I think the other thing that everybody's missing here in terms of people who aren't out on the campaign trail every day I I mean I've been following Trump around for more than a year I think it's 14 months now and I've been to probably close to 100 of his events it is not uncommon, I think this might surprise you, but it won't surprise three reporters on the trail. It's not uncommon for campaign staff to put their hands on reporters, manipulate right. them around. Corey Lewandowski has put his hands on me. Um, press staffers and other staffers um, who were staffing Mitt Romney uh, four years ago, Marco Rubio, um, Mike Huckabee, Hillary Clinton, they all put their hands on me. Right. Um, the, the situation, I mean, at, at, at basis, I think this is a conflict about a reporter saying, oh my gosh, he, he manhandled me, um, that's awful and that's unacceptable. And I mm -hmm. think, 
you know, look, I'm out there all the time. I, I like Michelle. She's a smart, smart woman. But I've seen her out there maybe three or four times on the trail covering Trump. I think it's possible that she just isn't acquainted thoroughly enough with the rules of the road out there mm. for two reasons. Number one, to realize that campaign staff do manhandle. And secondly, to know that when a Secret Service agent gives you an order, you obey it. Right. You know, it, you just simply don't question it. Um, for your own safety as well as everybody else around you. If you think it's unfair, then you find another way to do your job. Mm. Um, I've been ordered away from where I was by Secret Service agents, and you comply right. and you think another way. You know, and, yeah, I think and, if it, and if it comes out that they, because to me it was unclear in the video, to me it didn't look like they had said anything to her. Um, and I saw, I, I, but I can clearly see Lewandowski even reaching across one of the Secret sure. Service agents, which me, which to me, I mean, if he knew that a Secret Service agent was there, and obviously they are watching her, she's in their periphery, they see her, they know what's going going on. If they would have thought she was a threat, they would have stopped that instantly. Um, but to me, it seemed more like... You know, I, I should be very clear here, Dana. I'm not defending Corey Lewandowski. I, I no, think, I'm not suggesting you I are. He, I think he crossed the line. Remember, he's a sworn police officer, too. Most people don't know that about him. He's a police officer. Well, he can be deputized. A lot of people can be deputized. Fair, fair enough. But, but my point is that that he, um, I think he stepped over a line along stepping over. But at the same time, um, also, in terms of the videotape, I agree. I don't see anything on the videotape that is very clearly demonstrative of an agent giving Michelle Fields an order. I don't see that either. But I also am not reporting right. that those were given during the time frame. Right, the right. Oh. And, it, and it'll be interesting to see that come out, too, because, I mean, if they told her and if they come out and say, well, we did tell her, I mean, that is an important point to take into consideration as well. Um, with well, this, they, they told mm -hmm. me already, and I'm reporting that. So, right, I mean, but right. folks like Sean Davis don't want to take reporting at face value. And he's, he's all the cold. But can you blame a lot of people, though? David, I have to ask you, and, and you and I are friends, and we go way back, and I know that you're, you're good at your job and you're good at what you do, but can you blame a lot of people out there who maybe don't know you or don't even know Sean? They don't know, they don't know a lot of the people, even if they are more straight, no chaser journalists as opposed to like the MSNBC types. A lot of people just hate media. They hate, they hate all of us. They hate everybody. So they don't want to believe anything that they read or hear. Sure, of course. Of course. And a lot of people hate Trump, too, and they, they, I think they're eager to back down anybody who reports a fact mm. that doesn't support what they've already decided. Right. I, look, I think ultimately what should have happened in this case is that two people should have offered mutual apologies. Right. I think Corey Lewandowski should have come out and said, you know, I'm sorry I was a little rough on you, that happened, sorry about that. And I think Michelle should have said, I'm really sorry I disobeyed a direct order from a Secret Service agent. I think if those two things had happened, here's what bothers me the most at this point, just from a, the process point of view, is, you know, I've got this claim from a Secret Service agent with direct knowledge of it. We've gone to Michelle Fields and offered her space to tell her story at the Daily Mail, unfiltered, unedited. We said, write it your way. We'll let you use whatever pictures you want. We'll even run a cover of the book she's promoting in June. Do it your way. We'll just give you this. I mean, we're the world's most read English language newspaper website. It's valuable space. And we've offered it to her to tell her story her way and disagree with anything. And she won't do it. So I, I, well, I'm at a loss here of why I shouldn't believe this Secret Service. I don't know if she's talking much to anybody anymore at this point. Let me ask you this. How do you reconcile? Um, I think one of the things that, that makes it worse, I think one of the things that makes it worse for people to give Lewandowski the benefit of the doubt is because he did say at first that he never saw her and he never touched her, which clearly the video d has, has proven otherwise. And then even afterwards, he went for several days and he just, I don't think anyone can, can say that he didn't just go hog on her, whole hog on her, David, on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure uh, perhaps on Facebook, but on Twitter where I saw most of the activity, he ranted at her. And I mean, really, he went after her, just her character and everything. That seemed to, I think, a lot of people that would have been willing to extend to him in the benefit of the doubt, that kind of called his character a little bit into question. How do you reconcile that with, with, with this particular, with, with this story and how this is all panning out? Well, I, I don't reconcile it. I don't know Corey well enough to know his character or his um, or his leanings or any of that. I just look at the facts and see what they suggest. Uh, clearly, he made denials that he shouldn't have. I think the campaign, and, and also I think Donald Trump made denials. I heard him you know, say he thought Michelle Field made the whole thing up in a debate state room in Miami. Mm -hmm. I was standing there for that. Um, I, I think the only thing I can think of, honestly, in my head is that at the point where people first told Corey, hey, this woman says you grabbed her and threw her to the floor, or whatever Michelle's initial claim was, in his mind, he may have thought, I didn't throw her back to the floor. This person must be nuts. I don't know who she is. I don't know her. I guess I didn't do it. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Right. But I think on further reflection, once cooler heads uh, prevailed, I think everybody should have just said, okay, here's what we think happened. I misunderstood. I didn't recognize you. 
you know, here's the other thing. I, I've talked to a lot of reporters on the trail about this. Believe me, this is major back-channel conversation material for journalists on the campaign trail. And more than one uh, journalist uh, has suggested to me that maybe on that day, and I don't know this, so I, I hope it's not unfair for me to raise, but it's just there's a consensus among a lot of journalists, is that Michelle may not have been wearing a press credential at that event. So, you know, I don't know whether it would have been unfair for Corey to think she was somewhere where she didn't belong. You have to remember that the, the well, context yeah. of this. Right. This, well, hold on. The context is interesting because this was one of these um, election night press conferences held at one of his country clubs. And the vast majority of the people in the room are elegantly dressed, beautiful, social. Right. The Trump's rich friends, basically. And Michelle is a very beautiful woman and always dressed well and wearing beautiful clothes. It wouldn't have been ridiculous for an agent for even Corey to think, oh, she's one of the audience. We better get her away if she wasn't wearing a credential. And I don't mm. know if she was or not. That's a question I'd like to ask her, but she's not, as you said, she's not talking to anybody. Yeah. We'll see how this uh, story pans out. I wish he would have just been forthright, and if he would have just given an apology, we could be talking, and we could be talking about a whole other host of issues. Instead yeah, of like the abortion comments, we could be going crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, we could be having a, that was a, that was a very interesting story. We could be focusing on that, or we could be focusing on the yep. religious liberty battles all across the United sure. States.